here in Bromley with some <laughs> of the Bromley Y team. Could you introduce yourselves briefly, please? Yeah. So I'm Dominique. I'm an education wellbeing practitioner. Yeah, and I'm Katie, and I'm also an education wellbeing practitioner. Fantastic. And we are talking again about anxiety and top tips for parents to support an anxious child. Uh, so what's tip number one? Who's going first? Um, so tip number one is to kind of model confidence in your child's ability to cope, because we know with anxiety that... Um, children are actually really aware of our own reactions to things so if they maybe are branching out and trying something new um, I think as a parent you're worrying that they're going to be distressed or not yeah. cope with it yourself so you might be like oh like you know are you, are you, okay? are you sure you're going to do that or you might have a face and all of a sudden something they maybe were willing to try they might be yeah. they can pick up on that reaction so easily and be like oh maybe there is something to worry about and be concerned yeah. so I think if you're showing that you're confident that they're going to be able to cope with it so what if I am anxious about mm. it do I have to kind of fake it <laughs> yeah I <laughs> think it is a bit of fake it till you make it sometimes and okay. you know that naturally our reaction as parents would be to want to protect our children and sometimes yeah. it's thinking um can I kind of model some confidence and show them that there isn't really something to be afraid of. So it's thinking of when is it yeah. appropriate to show that anxiety. You know, if you're anxious about them, like falling, and you think there's a real possibility of that, yeah, it's fine mm. to tell them. But it's wondering about when is it appropriate to fake that confidence <laughs> okay. and a bit anxious inside. So fake it till you make it at the right moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think afterwards it's okay to say, I was really worried about that, but I'm really proud that you did yeah. it? Or, I mean, what's the, the, the tone to strike? Oh, yeah, I think that praise is really important. Yeah. So I think bringing out that praise about, wow, you were so brave, you did a great job. It's yeah. really good. Really and it, powerful. it brings it back to kind of, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's like, you know what, I was worried, but turned out it was fine. And also it is always helpful labelling out your own emotion mm. to your child because yeah. that's building that emotional literacy. So I think yeah. that what you're saying there about saying, I was worried and you yeah. did great and now I feel better. Yeah. Kind of really <laughs> so we can all be a bit more confident next yeah. time. Yeah. That's great. So you're kind of growing and learning together, I guess, aren't mm. you? Mm -hmm. What's the second tip? <laughs> so I think the second tip would be helping your child identify what the difference is between a worry and a problem. Okay. Because for children it can be, especially if they're having lots of worrying thoughts going through their head, um, it can often seem like there's nothing they can do. And there might be a mix of real worries like mm. what will happen in the future, what could happen to mum, and problems that they can actually start solving. Okay. Yeah. What's the difference between a worry and a problem? I think, yeah, a worry is something that might happen mm -hmm. in the future, where problems are kind of things that are a lot more immediate and concrete and okay. something you can actually sit down and think about maybe together or like helping them learn to problem solve themselves yeah. and take practical steps to address okay. it. Whereas I think, yeah, with worries, it's a bit more, it's spread up like, oh, but what if? And it's thinking about the future a lot more where you can really get stuck in just thinking yeah. about them all the time. So how do you help children uh, kind of differentiate between them? Is it about kind of listing them out and then working out which are which? Or how I do think you that's a really helpful them? way. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. listing them out and um, thinking, are there any of these that we could take immediate action on? Mm -hmm. Are there any of these that are completely out of our control? Mm -hmm. um, so for example, a lot of young people's worries might be, oh, there might be a natural disaster. Mm -hmm. Something might happen to mum. Really, there's no action we can take about that. So it's trying to think of your worries, what can we take a next step on? Yeah. What can we act on? Yeah. What yeah. can we do something about now? And then that can actually be quite empowering to sort of feel like you've got yeah. a bit of control over it. And what if there are things that a child's worried about that you can't do anything about that? How do you manage that? You've kind of gone, okay, so you're worried about a natural disaster mm. or that something horrible is going to happen to a parent. There's nothing we can do about that. Where does that leave us? I would say we want to be normalising, being yeah. that these are quite normal things to be worried about, which yeah. they are, and, you know, it's really common for young people to have things that they're concerned about, worried about. I think we would say talking about when you can give yourself a break from that worry, uh -huh. so taking a worry break, thinking about times when you're going to save your worry for later, yeah. and thinking about not worrying all the time. So yeah. it's, it's normal mm -hmm. to worry, it's normal to have concerns, but we don't want it to be taking up all of the day. Yeah. Kind of thing. And I think as well, it's. Some, for some worries like that it can be about like education because we know anxiety is really related to how likely you think something is going to happen yeah, so if it is something really 
unlikely. It's like, yeah. well, let's do some research together. Let's see how many, yeah. you know, how many of these have occurred yeah. recently. Um, a bit of like knowledge is power, sort of a yeah. moment. Yeah. To kind of reduce the perceived likelihood of it. I think the worry break idea is interesting as well because that's important both for worries that aren't real but also maybe you might have say for example a young carer mm -hmm. um, who might be worried all the time about stuff that's actually happening and their, you know, their, their actual problems in their life but being able to take a break from that worry is probably important for them too I think isn't it to have a break and say you know yeah. for this half an hour you're just allowed to be a kid you're not worried about you mm -hmm. know, your, your parent, your sibling, whatever. Yeah and I think for parents as well yeah. which kind of links to our third tip. Mm. <laughs> 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 Uh, which is to take some time to fill your own cup, <laughs> to uh, look after yourself and take some self-care because mm. for parenting you need to give so much, especially mm. if you have an anxious child because, you know, it takes a lot of energy as a parent to be yeah. able to support that child. So thinking about taking some time to look after yourself. And is that not something that parents might think feels a bit selfish? I mean, I think it's... For me, I, I feel like a bit of a mantra that self-care isn't selfish yeah. because if you're, um, if you're constantly thinking about other people, it's yeah, it's that kind of the fill your own cup metaphor is, you know, how are you supposed to be filling up other people and keeping them going if you've actually nothing left yeah. to give and I think it puts you in a much stronger position if you're taking care of your own well-being yeah. to support somebody else's because otherwise you're going to end up more and more stressed and anxious yeah. um, and that kind of filters back to reactions and picking up on the oh, okay no we're stressed now yeah. sort of a moment um, so yeah it, I think it can be tricky yeah. finding that time but it's important it's important to take it. Any final kind of tips thoughts ideas that you want to share? I mean I think you know if someone's already looking this up and watching this video they're already taking some good steps um, yeah. and that there's no right answer for everything but yeah trying to find out as much as you can and trying you know, out some different strategies and seeing what works for you. Brilliant well thank you so much for your time it's been a real pleasure talking to you and uh, yeah great tips so yeah perfect. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>